In this tutorial, we're going to use text and effects to make um, a realistic image using a piece of crumpled paper, um, which is a stock image that you can find in the folder for the COM210 Photoshop tutorials. So we're going to go ahead and start by opening that image in Photoshop. Here it is. We're going to um, go ahead and save this as a PSD. It's just a JPEG right now. So go ahead and do File, Save As, um, and make sure you choose the type PSD, Save. All right, now we're ready to make changes. Um, we're first of all going to rotate the image so it becomes vertical. If you ever want to rotate with perfect um, angles, the easiest way to do that is up under Image, Image Rotation, and we're going to do 90 degrees counterclockwise. So now this page is oriented vertically. In order to do a later technique, we need to make a version of this exact file that's a little bit blurrier and has higher contrast. So we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and uh, Gaussian Blur. And you, give, you see a little preview there. We want to pick something where it still looks like you can see all the crumples, but something that is a little bit softer. So anything about about two pixels is probably about right. You could maybe even go with a little bit more. Now we're going to go ahead and click on this Channels tab down by the Layers panel. This is just a different way of looking at the colors in your um, any image. Uh, RGB stands for red, green, and blue, and those are the different light colors that are being combined together to present um, these images on our screen. So um, we're going to hide Using, clicking on the eyeballs icon, we're going to hide them so that only the green one is showing. And then we're going to go ahead and go to Image, Calculations, and here it's showing uh, the background channels. We want to make sure that we're picking the green one because we decided that looks good if it didn't show up automatically. Um, blending, make sure that that is normal and make sure that the result is set to new document so it's going to save it as an entirely new psd file which is what we want and there it is our untitled our untitled uh psd file although it showed up smaller here it is the same size and we're going to go ahead and um, save that one and we'll go ahead and call this one um, crumpled paper and then call it displacement you can call it something else if you want but um, we're going to need this later on and be able to easily identify it. So now we have that file ready to go. We don't need it anymore, so we can close that one and go back to our original file. Um, and we can go back to our layers here. And uh, we don't want this one to be uh, blurred, so we can use our history to go back. So we've just rotated it so it's no longer blurred anymore if that step pr was preserved in your file. So we want to be back on our layers panel here and in the back background is the only layer we have right now. You want to right click on that and say uh, layer from background so that we can use it like a regular layer. Now we're going to start adding some text. So with the text tool, which is the one that looks like a T, uh, click somewhere near the top of the page, and we're going to type the word DESIGN in all capital letters. I'm using the font Arial Black, well, the font Arial set to black as opposed to bold or italic. Um, that's a good one to use. You could use something else if you want. And you can make it nice and big. You can use the drop-down menu to pick sizes, um, but you can also click right into that little size and change it there if you want it even bigger or to adjust it a little bit more. Um, number by number. Move that word so it kind of fits right in the top of your page for now. We'll be adjusting it later on anyway because um, we'll be adding some effects. But before we do that, we want to go ahead and just um, change the color of it. So you can pick the color of text. If you're on your text tool, you have that text highlighted. You can use this little palette um, up here to pick a color. You can also use the color swatches over there. And pick a bright color. I'm going to pick a, a really bright bright blue. And now you can see that that text layer has made a new one down in your layers panel. We're going to go ahead and add some effects to this text to give it kind of a warped appearance or an arc. So 
Um, you can do this by right clicking on the layer. You can get to the warp text options. You can also go up to type in the top menu and go to type warp text. And you want to make sure that you have that text layer selected when you do this, otherwise these options won't show up. So you can pick um, a couple different ones here. You could pick arc or arch, arc upper or the arch one. Do whatever seems good to you. I'm going to go ahead and stick with arc. And for all of these, you're going to want to bring down this slider so it's slightly less, less dramatic. Otherwise, it's not going to fit on your page and it's also just a little bit difficult to read. And then say OK. I can move it around using my arrows as long as I'm on the Move tool. Um, and in this case, I can still edit it as text. So if your size needs to change a little bit after you've done the effect, you can do that. I'm going to bring it down a little bit um, so it's not quite, quite as large. Go back to the Move tool to get it back in place. Now we're going to add another line of text. So we're going to go back to our text tool. And we're going to finish the phrase. We're going to say design is iterative. Iterative meaning that you make a draft, you find out how to improve it, you make another draft, and you keep doing that until you get to a good design. So this one, again, will want to change the size down to something that, that fits on the page, kind of right underneath the other word. You move it around. You can go back to the text type tool to change the color. This one should be a different color, a different bright color. You can pick something that they make sense to you, I'm going to find kind of a, a bright pink for this one. So design is iterative. All right, so far this doesn't look very realistic. It doesn't look like the words are actually on this piece of paper. So that's what the rest of this process is going to do. We're going to hold down shift to be able to select both text layers in the layers panel down here at the bottom. And we're going to either right click or go up to type and choose rasterize type. You can see that the thumbnails changed a little bit and no longer has the text icon. Now these are just being treated as images. So now we're going to right click or you can go up to layers and do merge layers. So now all of our text is in one, one layer and we can rename that maybe to make it easier uh, to keep them separated. So now comes the part where we're going to use that file we made at the very beginning of this process. So click on the text layer, the one that has your words in it, and go up to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Sounds kind of dramatic. It's really not that big of a deal. And the defaults are usually fine here. And this is where we need to be able to find our displacement PSD that we created earlier in this process and then click open. And you'll see that it kind of crumples the letters a little bit so that they fit the contours of the page. But it still looks kind of unrealistic. They're still just kind of sitting on top. You can zoom in too to get a better view of this. I'm zooming in using um, Control or Command Plus. There are also some design commands you can use there. Depending on how blurry you made your first um, PSD way back at the beginning, the letters may look too warped or difficult to read, um, in which case you may need to go back, adjust the blurriness of that, and then do this step again. Now we're going to change the blend mode of this layer. So the blend mode is up here under the Layers panel where it currently says Normal. So set the blending mode for the layer. And we're going to go ahead and change it to Multiply. We're also going to reduce the opacity just a little bit so that it, the little bit more of the paper shows through. You can pick something like 75% will probably look good in this case. Now we can zoom back out. I'm going to use um, Ctrl or Command 0 to zoom back out to perfectly fitting my screen. We're going to select both layers because we're going to rotate them together and we're going to go up to Edit, uh, Free, Transform, and Rotate. So we're going to rotate this whole thing together now and kind of move it around so that we have kind of the corner of the page showing at the top here. And when you are doing a free transform, when it's ready, you can double click and it will stay in place. You can also hit enter. 
Next we're going to crop this image so it is just showing a little bit of the top of the page as opposed to the whole thing where we don't have any content. So now we have this page showing. It doesn't matter that yours is rotated exactly the same amount as long as you've clearly done that step. We want to be able to fill the rest of this background with the same black color so we don't have those odd edges. So we're going to click on just the background layer, our photo layer. We're going to use the eyedropper tool to pick this black. It looks like it's just perfectly black, but it's good to just make sure and use the eyedropper to get it perfect. Now we're going to use the fill, the paint bucket fill tool and click in the spaces that are blank. You may have some in different places. You can click on some of those lines to make sure that they go away. I'll zoom in a little bit now that we've got it bigger. And right now it looks pretty good. If you zoom all the way in, you'll see that there are some variations in that background. You can still kind of see where that line was between the image and the fill color that we just put in. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, adjust that real quickly. Um, to be able to select all of this black area, we're going to go up to um, Select, Color Range, and then use this eyedropper. It might even guess, but you want to pick just that area around, and then say OK, and you'll get the little dotted line all around the black area. Now we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, an average. This just kind of makes all those pixels blend together um, a little bit more evenly so that we don't have those variations between the original image and the background that we just added. You can hit Control or Command D to deselect or go under Select, Deselect, and this image is now complete. Make sure you save it into your Tutorials folder.